So, I guess I've made it now that Sony is starting to send me camera gear early. So here we have the Sony 24 to 50 f 2.8 G lens. This is a really interesting lens because there's nothing else like it that Sony currently offers. Of course, we have the 24 to 70 G Master version 2, but this is a 24 to 50 that is almost half the price. So we're going to see if that extra 20 millimeters for the G Master version 2 is worth an extra thousand dollars. Now this is not going to be one of those videos that go into the fine details and go over all of the specs of this lens. There's other channels for that. In this video, we're gonna be focusing on whether this lens is actually fun to use and see how the photos are that we can get with this lens. So in this video, we're gonna go out and shoot with this lens on the Sony a7CR, which I feel like almost pairs perfectly with this camera. So let's go shoot. So if you've seen my videos in the past, you will know I normally do not like to use a zoom lens for photography. I normally stick to prime lenses, but ironically, this single lens could replace every single lens that I currently carry in my camera bag. Now, I normally carry a 24, a 35, and a 50 millimeter lens, with the exception of my 35 millimeter lens being an f1.8 aperture, but the difference between f1.8 and f2.8 isn't really that dramatic, but considering I mostly shoot still life photography and not a ton of portraits, and I don't mind using a tripod, it's really not that big of a deal. But the biggest difference is still obviously the size of this lens compared to those prime lenses. Now the reason I like using prime lenses is because of the small compact nature of them, but for what it's worth, this 24 to 50 is actually pretty small as well. Now normally a 24 to 70 f2.8 lens feels pretty front heavy and uncomfortable to hold on the a7C, but this lens actually balances quite well on this camera body. I'm excited to test out this lens and lighting is perfect right now, so I don't want to waste any more time. I'm trying really hard not to get my shadow in the shot. So I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I'm really enjoying using a zoom lens on the a7CR. Now I do not get to keep this lens, I do have to return it in a couple weeks, but I am strongly considering buying one for myself. I'm not gonna lie, it's making me feel kind of nostalgic, because back in the day when I first started taking photography seriously, I used to only carry two lenses with me, a 35 1.4 and the original 24-70G Master. Now, that was before I got the original A7C, but once I got the A7C, my shooting style changed drastically, and that's when I switched over to mainly only using prime lenses. And the original 24-70G Master was just way too heavy to use on the A7C. But now, I'm considering going back to my old ways and just carrying my 35 f1.8 and the 24-50 2.8, because this lens could easily replace my 24 and my 50 millimeter lens. Not to say I would never use those lenses again, but it just makes a lot more sense to carry something like this, especially if I'm traveling. So in a way, it kind of feels like this lens was meant for me.
it is the next day now and I have edited all of the photos that I shot yesterday. I don't think they're anything crazy, they're nothing special, but I feel like they show off the versatility of what this lens offers. So I think it's safe to say if you're looking for a good zoom lens for your a7c or any other Sony camera, this might be one of your best options. Of course, there is the Sigma 28-70, which is also a great zoom lens for the a7C, but I think it's a lot more valuable to have that extra 4mm on the wide end. I think it's a great step above the kit lens, and if you're looking for a solid zoom that is easy and comfortable to walk around with. Some things I did notice while shooting is that I found myself often having to take my eye away from the viewfinder to actually figure out where the zoom ring actually is because the lens is so compact. The other thing to note that I'm personally not used to, although I know it is common on other lenses, but not really any 24 to 70 or 28 to 70 lenses that I've used before, is that the focal lengths are reversed. So you have to zoom to 24 millimeters, and when the lens is not extended, you are at 50 millimeters. Now, this may be nothing new to a lot of you, but as someone who mainly uses prime lenses, it took a little while for me to get used to it. And it's probably a compromise they had to make to make this lens as compact as it is. In terms of size, I would say it sits right in between the 35 1.4 and the 20 millimeter 1.8. It also shares a 67mm filter thread just like those lenses, so it's always super convenient to have all of the lenses in your camera bag use the same filter size. So going back to what I mentioned at the beginning of this video, is it worth buying this lens or should you spend the extra money on the 24-70 G Master version 2? At the moment of recording this video, they do not have a confirmed price for this lens, but it is going to be between $1,100 and $1,300. And with the 24-70 G Master being, I think, about like $2,200, I definitely think this lens is probably the better option for a lot of people. Unless you really need that extra 20 millimeters from 50 to 70, which I don't think is necessary a lot of the time, especially if you're looking for a good zoom lens as an everyday carry lens, I think you're probably just better off buying this lens. And even after shooting with this lens for just a day, I am pretty sad I'm gonna have to send it back, but thank you Sony for sending it to me early and letting me check it out. So let me know what you guys think about this lens down in the comments below. Thanks for watching the video guys. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video and comment and I hope I could inspire you guys to get out and take more photos. Go out and shoot.